You gotta know what's right. You gotta remember what Marcus Aurelius said. Yeah, we obviously value ourselves more than other people, so why do we care about their opinions more than our own? No, what you think, you have to know what you think, you have to trust what you think, you have to go with it, and that's where you get where you wanna go. I remember I went to my publisher in 2012, and I said, I wanna write a book about ancient philosophy. And they were not excited. You know, in retrospect, makes sense, right? Who wants to read a book about an obscure school of ancient philosophy? They didn't think it would work. But there's a great line from the screenwriter William Goldman who wrote Princess Bride and a bunch of other movies and books. He says, at the end of the day, nobody knows anything. There's a lot of made up rules. There's a lot of rules of thumb. There's a lot of speculation about what'll work and what won't work, but nobody knows. Only you know what you want to do and what you want to spend your time and energy on. This is a really important stoic concept. Marcus Aurelius says, we care about ourselves more than other people, yet we care about their opinions more than our own. And one of the things you realize as an artist, as an entrepreneur, as a human being, is that if you let what other people think determine what you do, not only will you not ever get far, you'll find it's a losing proposition because one, they'll change their opinion all the time. You think you're going along with what they say they want, you think you're giving them what they want, and then in the end they'll change and you'll get caught holding the bag. But you have to develop, you have to cultivate a kind of a trust in yourself, in your own judgment. If you only follow what the majority wants, thinks, and says, you're never gonna do anything interesting, you're never gonna do anything new, and you're certainly never gonna do anything original or important. So what the Stoics actually sort of practice a bunch of exercises that cultivate this. There's a reason that Cato walks around bareheaded and barefoot. There's a reason that Cato sleeps on the ground with his troops. There's a reason, even though Cato was very wealthy, he always wore his worst clothes. He wanted to insulate himself from public opinion, from what other people thought. I don't think it's a coincidence when Julius Caesar attempts to overthrow the Roman Republic, pretty much everyone else goes along with it, but not Cato. Cato had calibrated his sense, not just of of what was right and what was wrong, but a strong objective sense of reality. He knew what was important to him. He knew the line he wouldn't cross and he knew a tyrant when he saw one. And so the ability to tune out what's happening around you and focus on what you know and what you believe is the most important thing from an ethical standpoint, but also from a business standpoint. Like now that my books have done well, now that I've been lucky enough to receive like the media attention that I've gotten for the books, all sorts of people want to write about stoicism and, and I get their requests to blurb their books all the time. I see that people now, because it's safe, because it's proven, they want to jump on board. But the only reason I'm in the position I am is that I was willing to take the leap, take the risk, go to what I wanted to do and say what was important to me when that wasn't the case, right? Everything that's great was original or different or looked at askance when you did it. And this is a really important concept. Peter Thiel talks about how competition is for losers. So I'm talking about this as a business strategy. Like if you wanna find the blue oceans, if you wanna find the real opportunities, you have to focus on the things that other people aren't focusing on, which means standing alone, being different, committing to something, even though there's all sorts of feedback to the contrary. There's, in fact, you're actually besieged with doubts and criticisms. Cultivating this ability to really know what you want to do, what's important to you, what you feel like you were put on this planet to do, this is a key skill. And people don't do it because it's not safe, it's scary, it's weird, but you can cultivate an indifference to these things. I think it's Chrysippus, one of the early Stokes, he says someone's sort of pressuring him to do something, he says everyone is doing it, and he says, if I wanted to follow the mob, I wouldn't have become a philosopher. If I wanted to write what everyone else was writing, why would I have become a writer? I would just go read their books. In fact, that's something I often do. Like when I'm thinking about a book, I go and look, has anyone ever written this before? Has anyone done it this way? If they have, it's almost a huge relief. It means I don't have to do it anymore. So we want to cultivate that kind of original thinking. And this is a hard thing to do because sometimes that means you're gonna be wrong, right? I've worked on other books that haven't succeeded. What I take from that is not that it was a bad idea, maybe it's just that I didn't do it right, or maybe it was early, or maybe some other thing happened. Even if I'd done the Stoicism book and it hadn't have worked, it still would have been the book 
that I really believed in. I get this too, like sometimes I'll talk about politics in these videos and people will get really mad. How dare you? To me, that's, that's a sign that I'm saying something that's important. If people go, oh, I'm unsubscribing, I'll never listen to you again. Okay, I didn't become a writer. I didn't build this following to tell people what they want to hear. I built it, I do what I do to say what I think needs to be said. That's what attracted me to this job. That's what gets me out of bed in the morning. It's not not wanting to offend snowflakes. I am in this for me. The fact that other people enjoy it and get something out of it, that's true. But I'm gonna say what I'm gonna say because that's why I do it. I would rather talk to a room filled with zero people or one person or 10 people than an enormous room where I'm censoring myself and not saying what I think. So for the Stoics, like these exercises, toughening ourselves up, you know, focusing on unpopular opinions, going, zigging when other people are zagging. This is practicing for when it really counts. Cato's somewhat untraditional dressing style was great as far as it goes, but it was preparing him for the moment when he had to take a stand that really mattered. Thrasia, Rutilius Rufus, there were moments where they had to put their life on the line to say what they thought was true, to fight for what they believed in, but they were able to do this because they cultivated in situations big and small the ability to go their own way, to do their own thing, and to say public opinion be damned. Of course, it would be wonderful if everyone appreciated everything, if good ideas were always given their immediate due, if creative people always had the leeway or the latitude to pursue what they thought was important, but unfortunately, that's just, that's just not reality. That's not how it goes. And so you have to realize that you're gonna need to cultivate a kind of independence. You're gonna need to cultivate that fortitude, that courage to step out into the unknown. As a poet once said, all growth is a leap in the dark. You have to be willing to leap into the dark. You have to be willing to take risks. I had just done a really successful marketing book and the first thing I wanted to do was like the opposite of that. But that was what I felt like I needed to do. That's what I felt like was important. And it turned out that I was right, but I wouldn't have been able to live with myself had I sat on that book because somebody else thought it was not commercially viable. In fact, I remember a friend predicted the obstacles the way would sell 5,000 copies. It sold over a million copies. It's translated in 30 languages. You know, it sells 5,000 copies in a good week now, six years after its publication. So people don't know. And, and realizing that they don't know. There's that great Steve Jobs line where he says, you know, the rules were just made up by people who don't know any better than you. And so having the confidence and then having the connection to yourself and what matters to you is what puts you in a position to buck conventional wisdom, to ignore the taunts and the jeers of the crowd. Marcus Aurelius talks about the clacking of tongues, talks about, you know, the mob. Part of why he was trying to remind himself that the cheers and the adoration of the crowd was not worth anything, was also so he wasn't afraid of it when he needed to challenge it, when he needed to do what was right, despite what the crowd thought. So we cultivate this kind of indifference, this strong sense of who we are, what we're doing, why we're doing it. I think part of the reason I was able to take that leap to do that book was when I dropped out of college and my friends and my family thought it was a terrible idea. Well. The fact that I learned something about myself in that experience put me in a position to be able to do it. When I left my job to become a writer in the first place, when I said, this is the book I wanna write, and they were like, ah, okay. I was willing to bet on myself and it worked out. And that's something that you, you have to cultivate whether you're an artist or an entrepreneur or a comedian or a, just a person living in the world where your neighbors are acting crazy in the middle of a pandemic and you start to question your own feelings about it. No, you gotta know what's right. You gotta remember what Marcus really said. Yeah, we obviously value ourselves more than other people, so why do we care about their opinions more than our own? No, what you think, you have to know what you think, you have to trust what you think, you have to go with it, and that's where you get where you wanna go. You know, data is great, but as Henry Ford supposedly said, if I'd listened to my customers, I would have made them a faster horse, right? If I'd listened to my publisher, I would have written five more marketing books. You have to be able to know what you wanna do. You have to trust in your ability to execute on that thing. And then frankly, you just gotta go do it. You're not always gonna be right. It's not always gonna work out, but it's not about the results. It's about, did you listen to that voice? Did you do what you thought was important? 
That's why we're practicing these things. That's why we're cultivating this independence. That's why we're cultivating this education. That's why we're learning. That's why we're thinking. That's why we take moments of stillness to reflect. And then that puts us in a position for when it counts, when there's something important, we do that thing. We don't give a shit what anyone else thinks. For the Stoics, wisdom was an ongoing process. It was a journey. Zeno said that well-being is realized by small steps, but it's no small thing. So how do we do that? Well, I suggest the Daily Stoic email. You can sign up at dailystoic.com slash email. One email every single day, totally free. The best wisdom and insights from the Stoics, from Zeno to Marcus Aurelius, Epictetus, and Seneca. Sign up, start your journey. Let me know what you think.